Welcome to Uncomplicating Weight Loss and Life. I'm your host, Eva Rodriguez, proud Latina, single mom, certified life coach, and weight loss coach. I'm here to help high achieving boss women lose their weight for the last damn time and up level their lives. When it comes to your health, weight loss, and this thing called life, I'm not saying it'll always be easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Welcome back for part two of the Back to the Basics series. If you haven't listened to part one, I recommend pausing here and listening to episode 120, where I break down exactly how to start eating intuitively, which is the nutritional foundation of my signature weight loss framework. Today's episode is about one of my favorite nutrition strategies and a complete game changer that works great when it's combined with intuitive eating, and that is the crowding out method. So crowding out is a really simple deprivation-free method of embracing nutrition because it simplifies how to eat foods that are healthy and nutritious without needing a restrictive meal plan or diet. So instead of obsessing over all the foods that you can't eat or that you shouldn't eat because this diet says so or because you're cousin said so or because some influencer said so, instead of following all that bullshit, with crowding out, we flip the script. It's all about adding in or crowding in nutrient-packed real whole foods. By doing this simple step, you're naturally elbowing out the not-so-great stuff like processed foods and junk foods. Hence the name crowding out. There's literally less room in your stomach for those other foods. When you're crowding out, you're making gradual changes to your diet by adding in colorful fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. Think of it like upgrading your meals without the unnecessary drama. Now let's talk about the benefits of the crowding out method. Because you're adding in more whole foods, which are usually plant-based or plant-forward, you'll find that you'll have more energy, better digestion, better gut health, and even clearer skin. It's also a super sustainable way to eat for the long term because you don't have to overthink it or even eliminate foods if you don't want to. It creates a positive framework for implementing lasting change in your diet and nutrition. Another benefit of this method is as your body gets used to eating healthier foods, you'll find that you'll start to crave those foods. Your body's actually really smart. Once you establish your new baseline, your body starts to crave these healthier choices. Trust me, for many, many years, I thought I just didn't like vegetables. Turns out I was just eating the vegetables that didn't taste good to me. My body started to crave vegetables once I found the ones that actually tasted good to me. So what does this look like? My favorite example is the pizza example. I have yet to meet someone who doesn't like pizza. This is how you can still eat pizza and not overindulge by using the crowding out method. You simply eat a small salad before you eat the pizza. And then watch what happens. What you'll find is that if you start with a salad, you won't overindulge and eat the entire box. There is a big difference in how you eat pizza if you come into it with some salad in your stomach versus coming into it starving and stressed out. I know I'm not the only one who has emotionally eaten an entire pizza. Am I right? Is it just me? (laughs) This will definitely help you to not overdo it, even if you are having an emotional eating moment. Another benefit that I love about crowding out is how much it helps us get in touch with our body's natural rhythms. You'll really start to learn how to be more intuitive with your body by using this method. And my weight loss framework is based on intuition, starting with intuitive eating, but also 
just learning how to really dig deep within yourself, within your gut, within your intuition. Because one thing I always say, we cannot trust our thoughts because they can change very quickly, but your body will never lie to you as long as you're paying attention. So here are five tips to start using the crowding out method in your daily diet starting today. Tip number one, drink more water. Sometimes what we experience as cravings or hunger is actually our body's misunderstood signals of dehydration. So you may think you're hungry, but you're really just thirsty. A really great way to figure out if you're genuinely hungry is to just have a glass of water first and then just wait 15 minutes. Then you'll check in with yourself and see if you're still hungry. Sometimes we'll feel a little something that feels like a hunger pang and we think it's time to eat. When really, you just need some water. If after waiting a bit, you're still feeling hungry, then you know it's time to eat and you'll start with the healthier choice first. But if you think about it, there's probably been times where you've sat down and had a meal, even though you weren't really physically hungry, you were just thirsty. And think about if you were to add up all the times that you ate thinking you were hungry when you were really just thirsty. All of that adds up. Also, by increasing your water intake, it will naturally reduce your desire for other sugary drinks and snacks between your meals, especially if you tend to drink sodas or sugary coffee throughout the day. Tip number two, eat the healthiest foods on your plate first. So if you first eat a salad or raw vegetables or cooked vegetables, you're going to be much less likely to overconsume starchy foods or the dessert afterwards because you're front loading your meal with the nutrients and the fiber that not only fill you up, but it gives your body the opportunity to get all the nutrients that are going to nourish your body. You'll still be able to enjoy whatever your meal or treat is, but you're not going to overindulge. And the key here is to not overeat. Tip number three, plan ahead. Planning what you're going to eat in advance is so important, and it's really going to help set you up for success when it comes to implementing this method of adding healthier foods to your lifestyle. This includes packing healthy snacks in your bag, keeping healthy snacks in your office, in your car, in your drawers, whatever it takes so that you're not going to the vending machine or to the cafe or whatever it may be in your situation once that mid-afternoon slump hits. And also keeping healthy snacks and fruits and vegetables in your kitchen and getting rid of the foods that are not good for you so that they're not accessible. One thing I teach my clients is food freedom. And when you achieve food freedom, you will trust yourself and your body completely. So there will never be a need to avoid desserts at the office or at a party. But if you have yet to build up that skill, because that does take some time, then I do recommend getting rid of the foods that you're tempted to overeat or to mindlessly eat. Tip number four, expand your grocery shopping list to include more vegetables. Instead of focusing on what you can't have or what you shouldn't have, Work on including more nutrient-rich foods that are going to help your body thrive. Anything that grows from the ground is going to be good for your body. It's going to be easily digestible for you, and it's going to be a healthier option than anything you will ever find in processed or packaged foods. So you can start by experimenting with different flavors, different recipes, or different ways of preparing food, because you'll never know if you actually like it unless you try it. See if you can experiment with making your plate colorful with vegetables. The visual appeal works as a brain hack for a lot of people. Just approach this with an open mind. Commit to trying out one new food or one new vegetable every week for one month and see what happens. And tip number five. Seek out healthy alternatives to your favorite foods. Once you start looking around, you'll be amazed to find how many foods are both healthy and taste really good. For example, try dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate. Dark chocolate has more nutritional value in it. It has antioxidants and it has less sugar. So if you have a habit of eating something sweet after your meals, instead try swapping it out with one dark chocolate square. 
and just really enjoy and savor each bite. I'd rather you do that than dig into a pint of ice cream or have some cookies or have some candy. And it'll still satisfy that sweet craving that your mouth may have without compromising your weight loss and your nutrition. So try different substitutes, different alternatives, and see how they taste for you and the effect that it has on your body once you start to get away from the packaged foods and more into the natural and healthier alternatives. The point isn't to try to fool yourself into liking something that you don't like. The point is to just explore new possibilities of more nutritious foods. Like I said earlier, I used to think that I didn't like vegetables. And it's probably because my mom used to try to make me eat fucking okra and Brussels sprouts. Now I know that there are so many different varieties of vegetables and I just prefer raw overcooked. You will find your own preferences as you try different things, but you got to try them. It's so important to expand your palate. Think of crowding out as taking control of your health by front loading your food choices with healthier ones so that you can be free to enjoy whatever is left over if you're still hungry. Crowding out supports you in choosing to do the things that are going to get you closer to your goals first. This is another example of simple yet transformational self-care. And it's simple enough that you can start using this method with your very next meal. If you want to learn how to lose your first or last 15 pounds without depriving yourself of your favorite foods, book a call with me and let's see if my one-on-one coaching is right for you. You will find the link below in the description. And that's all for today. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning into today's episode. To learn more about how to work with me, go to eva.fit and click on the work with me button. While you're there, be sure to check out my free weight loss resources so that you can get a jumpstart on your journey. I'll see you there.